All right, let's try that again. Now, one thing about these articles that are here, and I'm not sure exactly what happened here, but that's fine. Um, this Android list view tutorial, I just wanted to show you something that's kind of related to it, and that is this. Um, So this is this all the recipes. My version is the one that I've made the changes to. All right, but what I wanted to show you, if I can bring it up, is this. And I have never seen this on an article before. All right. So when you look at this, let's see where is it. First it says, permission is hereby granted free of charge to any person obtaining a copy of this software, etc. Okay. Then it says, you may not copy, modify, merge, publish, distribute, sublicense, create a degree, etc., etc. But there's something in here that says it's not supposed to be used pedagogically, which means in a teaching environment. I'm trying not to get myself in any trouble, because if somebody from Ray Wenderlich looks at this and says, well, all you're doing is you're reproducing our stuff and you're putting it out there. We're going to sue your butt. All right. So hopefully that's not going to happen. All right. So he talks about list views. I've already kind of shown you what a list view is. But I want to talk about some of the generalities of talking about, or talking about what a list view is. This project shows you how to construct a list view, how to populate a list view. It shows you how to customize. So when you're all done, it talks about going in there and basically prettying it up, for lack of better words, styling and beautifying. And then finally, how to optimize the list view's performance. All right. So they have you come in here, and they have, for each one of these projects that we're going to look at from this raywenderlich.com, they have what's called a starter and they've got a final. The starter is just bare bones. So if you run the starter, if you run their starter file, it looks like this. In other words, there's nothing really in it. They have you add stuff throughout this entire project. I already showed you what the completed one then would look like. All right. So let's take a look at this. All right. So it says the first order of business is to add a list view to your main activity. Well, let's take a look at what they've done here, all right, in here. What they're basically doing is a list view, by its very nature, is greedy. So when you put it on a page, it tries to take up the entire page. Most of the time, when you have a list view on a page, that's all that will be on there. In fact, what the author is saying here with the width and the height being zero DP, they're saying have it stretch and take up 100% of the page. That's literally what it's saying right here. And it's saying constrain it within the parent right there. So it's saying literally have it take up 100% of the page. That's what that means. All right. Then, and this is something I don't think we've seen before. All right. Notice it looks almost kind of weird because it says private late init var list view list view. Well, as you might guess, kind of the opposite of a late init would be an early init. What this says here, that private late init, basically tells the system don't load it into memory until it's needed. Did you hear that? That's literally what it's saying. All right. And then they come in here and they actually start to create this. This is where it gets to be a little funky. So let's look at their code and then let's look at the comments to see what the code does. All right. Now, first thing to understand is it says right here in, in part one, 
in English, what this is saying is, hey, we've got a we've got a separate file over here. That separate file is called recipes.json. All right. It literally says we are using an external file. When you use external files in apps, you typically use them in one of two ways. They're typically, typically, either an XML file or they're a JSON file. JSON files, JSON, JavaScript, object notation. All right, we can actually go back. So this is recipes.json. I want to show you the actual file that they're using for this. Okay, there it is. So this is the file that they're going through. There's about eight or ten recipes in there. And these files are filled with information. That should make sense. This is the title. You already saw that. I showed that to you before. That's the associated picture. That's where you can get the URL to get information about that recipe. This is a description of the recipe, how many people it serves, etc. All the ingredients. You've got your choice. You can grab as much of this as you want, which would mean everything, or as little of it as you want. For example, maybe all we want is this for everything that's in there. Maybe we want the name and a picture, and that's it. All right. It's even possible that what you could do is you could have two different list views. So in other words, and that's kind of what they're, they're doing in here, but you could have one that had a picture and a description of each one of the things that were in there. Then when you click on it, boom, it sends you to another page where you just put all the specifics for that particular dish. Does that make sense? So for instance, if I were to go and put this, all of this stuff into one list view, and then I went and clicked on the picture, let's say, for deviled or whatever it is, chickens under a brick, it would bring up another list view which would have everything on there. How to prepare it, all of the ingredients, the exact recipe, etc. All right, and that's what they're saying. What I'm trying to have you get across here is this, and that's the fact is that's JSON right there. All right, and we never really went through it for a lot of reasons, but this is creating, this is the way that you create an object right here in JavaScript. All right. So for lack of better words, this is like an array of objects. Each object is a recipe. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, whoops, I didn't want to do that, seven, eight, nine, ten, different ones in here, all right? And what we want to do from those 10 is we want to be able to pull out some information. So again, if we look at an example, for example, at this one, title, image, URL, etc., you can see all that good stuff, all right? Then if we jump back into here and we actually look at the end product, So what do we have here? Grilled, deviled chickens under a brick. Grilling these chickens, etc. You can see all that stuff in low carb. So if we take that, all right, cut that down, bring that over. Let's see if we can map this stuff up. There's the title right there. All right. There's the image right there. All right. That URL, I don't think we even have it. The description is what you see right there. But we only give it a certain amount of, of space on here. And once it fills that space up, we just put in dot, 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 meaning there's more to come. All right. The servings isn't shown. The diet label is right there. But what I'm telling you is you can set this up. This right here is this thing right now is set up. That's a list view. All right. And what you quite often see are you click on one item in a list view and it brings up another list view, all right? Where you've got specifics about that one item. 
So for instance, what if in here, maybe this will make it easier to understand, at least I hope it does. What if in here, instead of this, what if I had, I don't know, eight different singers, all right? And a picture of each singer and their name right there, maybe the kind of song they sing, all right? And let's say that the first one was Beyonce. And you clicked on here, and it brought up another list view of the top 10 selling songs from Beyonce. That makes sense? All right. That's kind of what they're talking about doing in here. I'll run this when we get all done. Oops. Where this starts to get hard is you have to write a heck of a lot of code to get this to work. So if you said, okay, fine, does that mean, do we need one, do we need to put one of these in our, in our project? No, I'd like you to try to put one of them in your project. All right. What I ended up doing was I went back, and this is what I tried to show you before the break. I should say tried to show you. Before the break, I think it was Brady, I was talking to about this, and he had asked how much work I had started doing on uh, Kotlin. All right, this, when I say the break, I meant the, the winter break, all right, not the spring break. And I, this was a class that I'd been taking, and as you can see, I'm about 79% done with it. All right, and I started going through this. This is the course that this guy has. No, I don't want to talk to you. All right. And I'm not going to lie. I'm just showing you this. So, well, notice the resume. This was based on the resume that we did. I made changes to it. There were things I liked about it, things I didn't like about it, but I, I grabbed that. Well, what this guy has to teach you list views is he has, an, it, he calls it an advanced Android app that he calls Weather. All right. So when you click on this, and I will, I don't need to hear him talk. Hello, and welcome to the section where we But when you look over here, this is how he explains it. I think he's got it in here. It might be in the next one. I don't know. No, it is in the next one. Okay. All right, he calls this his sketch, kind of like I wanted you to do. But he does it like this. There. This is what he builds, all right? This is a list view. This is not a list view, all right? So he comes up and he puts a title in here. This is an edit text. That's a button. These are some icons, and that's supposed to be a keyboard, all right? So the idea is, as he says, you can put in there New York City, click Get Forecast, and it shows you in a, in a list view, the next 10 days in New York. Does that make sense? All right. And that's a, a fairly common use for this. So I'm working along with his example. One thing I've, I always give this guy high ratings because he, he has really good stuff. That's the good news. Bad news is he never provides any of his code. You've got to key it in yourself. I don't mind keying it in myself. I mean, I would expect you to do the same kind of thing. But it's nice sometimes after I get done because I'm having an error in mind and I can't figure out what it is. So what I have to do is take screenshots of his code, all right, throw those screenshots into paint, and look at those and compare them to mine to try to see what the problem is. All right, so far I haven't found what that error is. All right, so why am I telling you all this? Well, I was thinking that probably I could get this to work either by tomorrow or the next day, and we could go over that. All right, but this one that's in here, it's a terrific program. I mean, I must have read this thing I don't know how many times. And it's making a lot more sense to me right now. Is it going to make sense to you? Well, let's look at it. All right. Notice one thing that they do, and I like this about articles in Ray Wenderlich, is they put comments in there, and then they say, now below we're going to explain what's happening. I already explained the first one. This says that we're going to go out and find a file called recipes.json, and we're going to call it in here recipe list. Now, 
I'm not, I don't want to make a big thing out of this, but notice that virtually everything in here is a val. See that? We talked about val versus var. So you're not going to be changing that stuff. That should actually make sense. It's a list of recipes. It's not that you're changing a list of recipes. It's a list of existing recipes. All right, so that's the first one. All right. Then the second one that's in here. That says we're going to create a list of strings. All right. Notice it says var list items equal array of nulls string recipe list size. Well, a couple things. This that you see right there is going to be the number of things that are in here. We already said there were 10 recipes, so that's going to be 10. I don't know why he put it in as an array of nulls, but that is creating a brand new array and it's making sure that it's empty. Okay? All right. Then what he's attempting to do in here in this third step is he is attempting to loop through those 10 recipes that he has just written, and he's attempting to take those and use them to fill up the list field. All right? Remember that when you, when you come in here, now this is another way of doing it, for i in zero until recipes.size. You could use a regular for loop like we've used in the past, but this is a more a Kotlin for loop. This is saying go from zero to nine. All right? So what do we have here? Well, we're creating, this says, grab the current recipe and put it in a thing called recipes. And then we're grabbing the title and we're putting that into our list. Now, the key to this is right here. I can tell by the look on your face, it's clear as mud, right? All right. So, step four, as it says right there, this creates and sets every time you use a list view, you have to create an array adapter to work with it. They're a team, for lack of better words. And it says, this creates and sets a simple adapter for the list view. And when you look at it, you're like, that ain't simple. When you go in and you create this, the IntelliSense kicks in and it says, which of these do you want to load? Right here, the key thing is almost always you choose this one, which says, make a list view and put each item on its own line. That's what it says. So as it says, this creates and sets a simple adapter for the list view. All right. So what does that mean? That means that after you get done putting in that code, this is what it looks like. The code they've given you so far, not the completed project, but what that does is it grabs those 10 titles that you saw from right here. So it grabs this title and this title and this title, etc. It grabs each one of those and it puts them in the list view. Does that make sense? So that's how they're filling it. All right. So then they say, okay, now for those of us who maybe can't totally conceive of that in our minds, what's happening here? So it says your, your recipe app is looking functional but not appetizing yet. It's not even it's not it's not even really functional. All it is is it's the equivalent of you sitting there and putting like 10 labels on a screen. Cuz right now it doesn't do anything else. So that's basically what we've done so far. Yeah, they're in a list view as opposed to having 10 labels, but they don't do anything. So the author says, "What if you wanted to show more than just the titles? More than just text? What if you wanted to do things like add pictures as an example?" So the, the author says, well, this array adapter that we just created, it's not good enough. The array adapter is just set up for stuff like this. Again, I showed you the example at the beginning where I showed you my contact list. That's pretty much what this is right here. It's like we created a contact list. It's just got text in it and nothing else. So the author's saying if you want to do more than that, you have to go and create your own adapter. So, 
turns up in here and says, okay, fine. Then what exactly is an adapter? Let's take a look at the picture on the screen, if you would, and notice that the adapter is in the middle. It both gets information in and sends information out. So as it says there, the adapter loads information to be displayed from a data source. And guess what? You have done stuff like this before. Last semester, when we were in the ASP.NET class, we used data sources with databases. All right, so you have used things similar to this before. As it says, that data source could be an array, it could be a database query, it could be anything that holds data. Data source, all right. It says <clears throat> the adapter loads the information, then inserts it into the list view. List view is a subclass of adapter view, so you can populate it by binding it to an adapter. So the author says here, it's kind of what I just said, but I'm going to say it again anyway. The adapter is a conduit. It's in between the list view and the data source. So notice it gives you that in the bulletized list there, it says it kind of works like this. The list view asks the adapter what it should display. Then the adapter jumps into action. It grabs whatever it's supposed to display from the data source. So it goes here. It decides how it should be displayed, and it passes it back. Now, I don't know if you remember this from last semester, but if you remember when we talked about model view controller, remember that? And we said the model was kind of the data, the view was your finished product, and the controller was kind of the go-between the two, well, there's your, there's your controller, there's your model, and there's your data. All right, or your view, I should say. That's what it is. So the array adapter allows you to grab data from some kind of a source and throw it into a list view. All right. I, don't, I don't know any other way to say it than that. And you know what? I, I'm going to say this. You might laugh. It's honest to goodness. It's not meant to be funny. I actually practiced what I was going to say. I don't normally practice a lecture before I give it, but I did. And I thought, this isn't going to make any sense to anybody. So I went back and read it a couple more times. And I thought, okay, I, I mean, I get it. But can I get it and explain it in a way they can get it? I didn't know. So the author says, okay, now that you've dabbled in theory, let's get to work on creating your own adapter. So what the author is saying here is using a regular adapter is fine if basically all you want to throw in there is a bunch of text. We don't. We want text along with pictures and maybe even something else. So we have to create our own adapter. All right. What you end up doing when you do this stuff is you end up creating a lot of very small classes. Every time you want to do something, you create a class to do it. All right. So the author says here, right mouse click on, when, when you do this, you come up to here, let me see, I, I better find it, so. I think at least this is mine right here. So I had to make some changes to this in order to get it to work. I'm just telling you that right now. Some of the stuff that they had in here, it's not even old, it's about a year old, but some of the stuff has changed since this article was written. How did I find that stuff? I was Googling like crazy to look at things. But if you look in here, see what I tried to do? Move this over. See all those comments? I put those in. All right? Because I thought it might be easier for you to understand what was going on. All right? 
So let me run it. somebody's old one so hopefully it'll reset itself all right so there it is that's the completed project this is what you have you've got to look under where it says JPS version and this is the only one, as I mentioned, just this first one. If you click on it, it brings up another screen. Well, it's supposed to have something there. It did. I don't know why it doesn't. But what's that? Yeah, okay, thank you. It's got that. All right. And you can go back and forth with it. Now that I say that, it probably won't let me go back and forth, but you get the idea, hopefully. All right? So there it is. And what they're showing here is that's the list view, the fact that it can go up and down. And what they're saying is since that you wanted to customize that, you couldn't just use the vanilla generic list view. You had to go in and create your own. And that's more than anything else is what they show you in this project. All right? So again, I came in here, and it may or may not look like it. I'm not asking for you know thanks or congratulations, but if you look, I spent several hours putting the comments in, and trying to put them in in a way, I took them from their article, but where they would make sense to you, or where I thought they would make sense to you, or where I hoped they would make sense to you. All right, so you come in here and you build your own adapter. And they show you how to do that. All right. Then you have to basically do the equivalent of open up your adapter, which is called inflating the adapter. Now, some of the stuff I think, when you look at in here, I really maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, but I think some of the stuff you can look at and it'll make total sense. Other stuff I think you can look at and it won't. All right. So it says your next step is to implement the adapter methods. So in other words, any adapter has this kind of stuff. Well, some of this, just take a quick look at it. It should make sense to you. That first one, get count. That just is going to show you how many things are in your list field. That's it. Get item. That will allow you, what, you know, whichever one of those you click on, it'll bring up the associated information. Get item ID, almost the same thing. So they break this down and they explain what each one of these methods are. Again, you've got all that stuff in yours. Right. The funny thing is, I don't know if any of this is making sense to you or not, but out of the articles that, that I grabbed from here, the one, this one and the two recycler views, this is the easy one. The other two are a lot harder than this one. So the author says here, defining the layout of the list view rows. Again, this is why you wanted to create your own adapter. So you could come in here and you could customize it by putting in a picture. If you noticed, a title. Underneath the title is a subtitle. And then off to the right is the detail, which tells us it's a low carb or whatever. So they build this. All right. And with much of the stuff that's in here, it's not that there is a lot of code, but there are a lot of classes, and each class has a little bit of code in them. All right. In fact, if you look up on the screen here, you'll notice. Let's see, project window. Come on. All right. If you notice that what's in here, in the past we've had a main activity. 
or a main activity with maybe one more activity. Well, now notice we've got a whole recipe adapter in here. We've got a recipe details activity. So this is going to show the details when you click on one of those pictures. All right. And this is how we set up a recipe. And you'll notice this is almost total JSON. Now, how can I go and spend a period or two talking about this, showing you an example and say, now, put this in your program. Put this in your app. You may be able to do that, and you may not be able to do that. It's okay. All right? It's funny because at the beginning of the semester when I talked to Paul Smith, my counterpart at um, in St. Louis, and I told him you would all have to create your own app. He's like, wow, you might be biting off a little bit more than you can chew there. I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm not going to have them create their own app. I'm going to go have them go out there and find one from the app store where they can get code and then just make modifications to it. Well, I didn't think what you were going to do was going to be that different. I thought you'd probably go out to the app store, see something, and, and say, I could do something kind of kind of similar to that. It'd be pretty cool. Now, some of you, I thought, because you're, you're all different, but some of you, I thought, might say, you know, I want to start from scratch, and I want to do this, whatever this happens to be. All right? And some of the rest of you might say, you know, I'm too afraid if I start from scratch, now it's going to be the beginning of May, and nothing's going to work. And I'm going to fail the freaking class. And I don't want to do that. All right. But he's one of the people that I'm going to invite for these presentations on the night because I want to see what you're going to do. All right. And it was my, my idea that by forcing you, for lack of better words, to, to as much as possible stick to these guidelines and these dates I've given you, you're not going to be able to fall behind. All right, that's the hope. The hardest part is going to be making it work. I think that if I if 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 Amin says I want to do this for my final app, what it, regardless of what it is, I think he's you know he's an intelligent young man. He could sit there and in an afternoon he could do part one, where he could sit there and he could write up what he's going to do and make some boxes and say this is what I think he could do part two, where he and even probably part you know we yeah, have parts one and two where he did a prototype. And you, know, you click on a button and a, a toast or something would come up and say, this is what's going to happen when you do this. The hard part is going to be taking that stuff and converting it into actual code and making it work. That's why I'm telling you right now, please, you know, and again, I've given this example before. It's not meant to be funny. Don't say, well, yeah, my project is I'm solving world hunger. You're not going to do that in an app. So don't sit there and think I can do 1,500 things in an app. Pick three or four, or two or three, depending on the app, and work with that. All right. What I didn't want to see happen was you grabbed a calculator that was from the app store. You, you managed to get the, the source code, and all you did was change the color. Sorry, that's not worth 250 points, and that's not worth giving you a lot of lab time for. All right. My hope is that during some of this lab time, you're going to be trying to learn some of this stuff on your own. So if there's something, hey, I wonder if I could do this in Android. Whatever it happens to me. Colin says, I wonder if I could do this in Android. All right. So where does he, where does he start? He goes out to developer.android.com, or he Googles whatever it is he's interested in. And they'll probably, if there is something, will probably be out there on developer.android.com. And let's say that he's got some real snazzy thing with all sorts of pictures in it that he wants to work on. All right. So he's going to be able to present that. And I, I and, and he'll be able to hopefully explain what it is he's trying to do. But if people say to me, wow, did you teach him that? Hell no. They learned it on their own. Because there's, you know, in, in the amount of time I have in this class, there's only, I can only bring you so far. That's why I'm not even sure if going down this route is the right route or not. All right. The other thing that they do in here, if you notice says, now that we got the references sorted out, you need to populate each element with relevant data. To do this, you have the following code snippet underneath the previous one. Well, they go out here and they actually use an external file, an external product called Picasso. 
I didn't know that existed until I read this. So what does the author say here? Step three, make use of the open source Picasso library for asynchronous image loading. Is there somebody in here? I'm asking you this. 2.30, we'll take a break. But I'm asking you this. Is there somebody in here who, in a one sentence, can tell me what's the difference between synchronous and asynchronous? You don't have to all speak at once. Dominic, you know, go ahead. No? Okay. The idea is, let, let's assume, okay, that, you want to try it? Go ahead. Bless you. That you're, you're on the right track. Yeah. So the idea is this. Let, let's say that right now I'm really thirsty and I'm out of my water. All right? And I've decided we're not doing anything until I get more water. We're not doing anything. Okay. As opposed to a lot saying, okay, Ethan's going to go outside and get me a glass of water, but I'm just going to keep lecturing while he's gone. When something is synchronous, it has to start and it has to stop before something else can start. That's typically the way that the most synchronous things work. When something is asynchronous, you use what are called threads where you can have different things running at the same time. What this Picasso does is it allows for asynchronous image loading. So while your image is loading, the system isn't stuck there waiting for something to happen. Other things can be happening, either in the background or in the foreground. And that's what they're talking about. Now again, one of the reasons I decided to show this was just to show you this. I don't know anything about Picasso other than what's in here. I think that's why they, they load as they're needed, basically. Yeah, and that's that late in late in it that we looked at before. That it's it's what it's saying is while you're doing that, don't stop the app. Let it keep going and doing its other things, either in the foreground or in the background. That that's my take on it. Okay. And as you pardon? What's that? You've actually got it in here. It's in the project. No, I know that. My take is it's allowing you to move up and down, and it's loading the pictures on an as-needed type of basis. But it's not waiting while those pictures are loading. That makes sense? So as you're going back and forth and, and going from one recipe to the other, et cetera, you're able to keep interacting with the app as opposed to the app pausing and waiting until everything is loaded that has to be loaded. That's my take on it. All right. And the author even says in here, you should never perform long-running tasks on the main thread. Well, uh, guess what? You may or may not know this right now. Every single thing we've done in Java, we have not used asynchronous tasks. We have not. Everything has been synchronous. A lot of the programming that you write will be synchronous. But anything that you do that's got a lot of interactivity to it will need to have an asynchronous component at one time or another. All right, so they recustomize the app, then they come in here, and this is the picture I showed you before. The author says, now you're cooking for real, look at these recipes, etc. All right, then they say, okay, that's all fine, but it would be kind of nicer if we could make them look a little nicer. So they come in and they do some styling. Now, you might look at this and say, okay, here's the first one, okay, and here's the next one. Okay. They don't really look very different to me, and they're not. The author walks you through actually doing some styling. All right. 
it's not CSS, but it's putting code in there that would be almost the equivalent of CSS. Does everybody understand? Does everybody understand this? That when we're in here, all right, when we're in here and we go into our, for example, I'm just going to grab, I'm going to go into res here and into uh, layouts and activity main is fine. Okay. So if we go into here and we go into design mode like this, all right, and it doesn't matter, don't worry that it's small, it doesn't matter. But if we go and click in here and we load up here, do you realize that you, in many ways, you're doing the equivalent of CSS right there? Does that make sense? All right. And just like what, you know, but here it's considered to be a little bit more visual. And here it's considered to be less visual. But you can put it in in either way. Sometimes the best way to learn this stuff is to sit there and say, geez, I wonder what else I could do. So what do you do? You come in here and you type in Android colon. And then you can start seeing what's in there. I don't know what all this stuff is. I use, I learn what I need to, to learn and use what I need to use. But sometimes there's a lot of stuff in here that, you know what? I don't know what it is. And if you said, hey, did you know you could do this? No. All right. In that app that I showed you before, this thing, all right. One of the reasons I thought of showing you this is here's, here's a little question for you. Do you remember? When you bring up an app, what kind of layout do you get by default? Constraint. That's what he uses here on purpose. This is a constrained layout. And I thought it would give me a chance to show you that. In fact, I was not aware of the fact that the constrained layout in here, this is almost exactly the way it's done in iPhone development, the way that he did it in here, which I thought was really cool. Because I hadn't done a lot of constraint here. I'd done them in, in iPhone, but not in Android. All right. And what he does in here is he sets these, these pictures up. They're constrained. This is constrained. This is constrained. And that's constrained. And you're like, well, who cares? Why is that such a big deal? Well, one thing that does is it puts stuff on the screen and it basically centers it, whether you're in portrait or landscape. It sets it up so it's got a nice view either way. I think at least that's pretty nice, all right? And we can build this. I mean, you could build this right now, all right? But I think we can build this. I just want to get this to work. That's all, all right? Oops. So that's when they come in. Notice the colors. They have the different different colors for the different types of meals. What's other stuff you could have done? Well, we could have drawn boxes, you know, a different color box around each image if you wanted to do that. Let's say, for example, notice these are all chicken, or these are at least. We could have had chicken in one color. We could have had ribs in another color. We could have had desserts in another color or different fonts. The one thing I would tell you to be really leery of when you're working on this stuff, sometimes people work on this, it's like, this is so cool, there's so much neat stuff I can do, that it's, it's like, imagine that you threw up on the screen, because you want to show everything, but you try so hard to show everything that your message gets totally lost. So what I'm saying is, I wouldn't use a dozen different fonts on one page in an app. Because it's just going to make it hard for people who are looking at your app to view it. All right. Again, you don't want the presentation to, to, to take away from the message. The only time you want to do that is if you have a bad message. I mean, if I was trying to get you to do something that I knew you didn't want to do, then I might be real concerned with the presentation. All right. But if I'm trying to get you to do something, I want to present. Yeah, I want it to look nice, but I want it to wear... You understand exactly what it is I'm trying to have you do. All right. All right. Let's let's finish this. It'll take a couple more minutes. Okay. All right. So they have you come in there and do a new activity. This is where they set the recipe up, so they can grab the other information that's in there. Okay. 
So what ends up happening in this example, this is what they have. All right, we already looked at that. And then finally, they come in and they talk about optimizing performance. May not sound like a big thing, but if you have the best app in the world, and when you open it up, again, Ethan had asked that question about Picasso, but one of the reasons you want things to be asynchronous is what if I have the best app in, app in the world, but it takes five minutes to load? All right. Most users will give a site about 10 seconds on average. It doesn't matter if it's a website or an app, but they open it up and if after 10 seconds, something's got to be wrong with it, I'll try it later. And they may or may not try it later. And if the idea is, let's say that you're building, you know, let, let's, because we've used it so many times, let's say that what, what you're going to do for your app is you're going to use, you're going to build your own guessing game. We've done guessing games type of thing. So you're going to do your own guessing game. All right. I, my guess is if I went out there and I and I put guessing game into the app store, I'd get hundreds of things back. Would you agree with that? And probably out of those hundreds of things, most of them would be free. So why am I why is somebody gonna want to go to mine? It'll be the write-up that I put in, and it'll be if I can get them to go there once, it's gonna be something that makes it stand apart from all the other ones. Because otherwise it's gonna be one and done. Okay? And the other thing is yeah, it might be one and done, but what I want is I want them to look at it and say, it's pretty cool. And then at the bottom, I want to make sure they scroll all the way down and they see, if you get the paid version, you can have this. Because that's where I'm making my money, right? Now, you may or may not have time to do that. You may put a free one out there and it might be free forever. That's okay. All right. But when you optimize, you want to make sure it runs as slick as possible and that's what they go through in here all right so what I am going to try to do I don't know if I can get it done by tomorrow or not if I cannot get it done by tomorrow tomorrow will be lab if I get it done by tomorrow we will go in and try to create our own version for lack of better words of something that looks like this all right now what I would say though is if you're going to put this, if we create this and get it to work and put it out there, this wouldn't be a bad thing. If you go, you know, this is pretty cool. I'm going to put this on my portfolio. You should, you know, then I would put a message in there. You know, to, you know, uh, this this is an example based on and give the person credit. You understand what I'm saying? Really start to be leery if you're going to go and create your own website. You know, have your own domain, etc. Because I see this stuff all the time. I go out to people's domains and it's like, oh, I know they stole that because I know where the original is. You can get yourself into a boatload of trouble for that. You know, there's a lot of places that are out there. For instance, these icons that are right here. Now, of course, you can tell he drew those. But what he did was he went out there to flaticon.com. All right. And under flaticon.com, when he did it, and this tape is about a year old, there were 500,000 different icons. Now it's taken a while, but there's three quarters of a million. So there's 250,000, actually it's like 770,000 some. So there's 270,000 more than when he did it. But a lot of those say on there, if you're going to do that, you can use these for free, but you have to give me attribution someplace. You should do that. I don't care how you do that. I don't care if you have it on your main page. Special thanks to, you know, Ethan Wilson at ethanwilson.com for providing this for this app. But you should do that. Why? Just to cover your own behind. If you learn to do it now, okay, it's almost 750. I thought it was 770. But when he did it, it said 500,000. So again, that's what he did. He went out here and he said, weather. And you'll notice there's tons of them out here. All right. But with some of these, you know, you click this and what's really cool, too, and I don't know if I ever explained this to you or not. I have no idea. But if you click on this and you come on, you say you want to download it. All right. Would you want to guess which one of these four that you would use and why? Anybody know? No. You use the SVG because they automatically scale. So if they're real small on the page, they'll look exactly like this. And if it's real big, yeah, it's scalable vector graphic. 
All right. You want to use those. Yeah. And that's why. All right. Because you don't know it's going to look different on someone's tablet as opposed to the way it's going to look on their on their phone. All right. Yeah. They're actually like if you save this one. So if I if I say SVG here, and uh, it says you must credit the author. There you go. All right. It says copy this link. Well, that's expecting that you're putting it on a website. You're not. You're putting it on on, a, on an app, but you can still do something similar to that. That you you should know how to do that. Yes. It it depends. As as just mentioned here by Ethan, they can be very big. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like it, it can it, it can page. slow down it can slow down a yeah. website a lot. All right, especially if you're if it's responsive and you're constantly making it bigger and smaller, yeah. so it doesn't like exactly play super nice with Bootstrap, for example. All right. Yeah. Can you? Yeah, you can, and you can you can go out there. I'm sure you can go out there and Google it, and you can find articles that say you should always do that. So what I'm going to try to do, that's pretty much it for this article. And I don't know what you got out of it. Hopefully you got something out of it, okay? But um, so for the rest of it. I, Dan, I, I couldn't tell you for sure. I think it's just your, it, 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 it's like a limited number of covers. You want to use it for iPhone. Yes. Like yes. You want it, it should be used for very simple stuff. Like that. Yeah, I wouldn't be using it for a photograph. No. No. That's what I mean. No, not at all. No. That's that's basically if you don't know, that's kind of why pings were created. Yeah. yeah. I mean there's other stories besides that, but that's why pings and this is yeah. basically this is a you could for lack of better words, we, we used we used our animated GIF. Basically, it, well, I look at an SVG in this case as being like a responsive GIF. That's pretty much what it is. So I would use it where I'd be using GIFs. All right. All right, so I'll see what I can get done. The rest of the period today will be lab. If I can get this done by tomorrow, we'll at least do part of it tomorrow or as much of it as we can do. You won't have to turn it in, but it'll give you an example to show you if you decide you want to try to put a list view into your project how you could possibly incorporate. Does that make sense? All right, so the rest of the period is yours.